John Moxley started the show by coming out. Raucous reaction in CM Punk's whole hometown of Chicago. Mox told the crowd that he had they had no idea how much it hurt him to see Punk not be the returning hero that the crowd wanted him to be. He said Punk wasn't what anyone wanted him to be when they, quote, gave him a second chance in the greatest sport in the world. It just didn't work out, end quote. But he has zero sympathy for him because he's got a fragile ego, a fragile body, and a fragile mind and spirit. So that said, he's got a contract that's open for anyone, any place, anywhere, anytime. And he threw it down in the middle of the ring and got out of there and was gone. And at that point, the camera then switched to the announce desk. So Excalibur and Taz and Jim Ross could run down the rest of the show. And as they started to do that, Ace Steel who works for AEW, and as many people know, one of the original Second City Saints alongside Punk and Cole Cabana, the trainer of those two men. He came out, got into the ring, got the contract, was very upset, stuck it in his pocket, stormed back to the back. We then go to a promo with Chris Jericho that was interrupted by Daniel Garcia. Garcia apologized to Jericho for his immaturity last week and says he's got a lot of respect for Chris Jericho. And he tells Jericho that he believes in him. And he believes that Jericho can defeat Brian Danielson on Sunday without having to resort to dirty tricks. Jericho says all is fair in Wrestle and Romance. References his days working for Genshiro Tenru's group in, in Japan. And there's a story in Jericho's book, uh, the uh, Around the World in Spandex one, where I, there's a story about Tenru that I'm going to, uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to read the book again tonight, and I'm going to figure out a way to actually say this on the air tomorrow without without getting bleeped too many times. But it's a it's certainly a unique one uh, that led into Chris Jericho, or I'm sorry, Chris Jericho against Grace uh, Jake Hager, Brian Danielson against Jake Hager, and. Look, it's Jake Hager. Uh, he's not exactly the most dynamic presence in the ring, but when you're in there with Brian Danielson, he brings your game up, and I thought it was a very solid match. William Regal and Chris Jericho were both at the commentary table. I believe that Regal told Excalibur uh, that he was going to sop him up with a biscuit. He didn't put it in those terms, but I, I had a feeling that's what, what he meant. But... I thought it was a, a, again, it was a good match to which Danielson got the victory. Afterwards, Menard and Parker ran down, which caused Claudio and Wheeler Yuta to come down, and they fought every, you know, they fought back off in the crowd, and that ended up leaving Brian Danielson in the ring by himself, trying to recover. As his back was turned, Chris Jericho ran down from the commentary table, chair in hand, went to go after Brian Danielson, but he was stopped by Daniel Garcia, who said, Chris, you don't need this. You just don't need this stuff. Jericho was, of course, upset. He turns around into a knee strike from Brian Danielson, laying him out. Danielson, of course, has a big grin across his face as he walks by Daniel Garcia on the way back to the locker room. Garcia, he looks upset. He knows he screwed up. But then again, he's also looking at Jericho, knowing that Jericho probably screwed up bringing that chair down there. We'll see how this whole thing plays out. It's going to end up at some point, I hope, with Daniel Garcia choking out Chris Jericho. But I thought that was a really good segment. Really nice match to actually start the show. Afterwards, when we got back from a break, the wingmen... We're standing in the ring. Ryan Nemeth had the mic with J.D. Drake and Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi. And they were holding protest signs saying they demanded more TV time. Long story short here, W. Morrissey's music hit, and he came down to the ring, quickly cleared it out. As he was doing this, a very intrigued-looking Stokely Hathaway made his way down to the ring. And after Cass had cleared everybody out of it, Stokely handed him one of his business cards. They left together. Tony Schiavone tried to stomp uh, Stokely on the ramp and ask him, you know, what's going on with all these business cards you're handing out? Stoke didn't take too kindly to this, said it was none of his business. When Tony said, hey, it's national TV, it is my business, Stokely snatched him up. 
Tony couldn't do anything back because W. Morrissey started to menace him, and that was that. Even though that crowd was chanting Tony, he wasn't going to make another move. So it looks as if Stokely Hathaway's crew is getting a little bit bigger, and it's a, a motley crew right now with some of the cards he's been handing out. It's going to be interesting to see uh, exactly what this crew looks like by the time that he's done, but he's got his monster and W. Morrissey coming in. Alex Marvez then interviewed Will Ospreay and Aussie Open in the locker room, and that's when Don Callis walked in, and he did a hell of a job gassing up Ospreay, saying he's not the next Kenny Omega. He's his own man. He's Will by God Ospreay. He did throw a little shade in there, noting that he did get pinned by the one-wing angel the only time that he and Kenny Omega faced off in a singles match, so... He got a little bit of shade in there, but the way things are going right now, with the big baby faces to the crowd that the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega are, where does Don Callis fit into all this? Don Callis, with connections to New Japan Pro Wrestling, what is he thinking about all this stuff? He's a very devious man that Don Callis is, so I have a feeling this is a situation that we, we might want to keep an eye on. We got a pre tape package of Kip Sabian and Pac. The two will face off with the All Atlantic Championship coming up at All Out. Hikaru Shida and Tony Storm then defeated Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter. All four of these women will be involved in the interim women's title match coming up on Sunday. Britt went for the glove, and when she did, and this was a great shot, she went down to get the glove. The camera focused in on Reba or Rebel putting it on her hand. And as she did, you see Shida in the background jump up to the top rope, and then all you see is a foot in Britt Baker's face laying her out. Sheeta ends up getting the pin. I thought this was a really good match. I don't know what direction they're going to go on Sunday. You know, there's money to me in Jamie Hayter against Britt Baker. The problem is they're such a good unit together. And I'm thinking Tony Storm comes out of this match on Sunday with the championship. You can tease some tension with Britt and Jamie, but you can still have another Tony Jamie Hater match. You can still have some things going on there where you can keep Baker and Hater together and maybe hold Storm off for Rose as you can t continue to tell the stories. But last night was a great example. You just watch Jamie Hater in there and she's going a zillion miles an hour. Again, no offense to anybody else, but you know the amount of effort she puts into moves outside the ring and putting her body on the line and how good everything looks. Big fan of Jamie Hayter there and again. You know, the four women that they have here, I know there were some people that were, you know, kind of taking shots at Sheeta's reaction coming back last week saying she didn't get much of a reaction. And it was a little bit more disappointing, but I think we heard it this week. You know, she's back now. As long as she's treated with respect and in the mix, you're going to get the fans back behind her. She's got natural charisma. So guy with a ton of charisma, Miro, standing in the shadows still. Miro is the one guy in pro wrestling where – when it comes to these promos, I don't need to see him wrestle. I love these promos that he keeps having. I think he's great doing them. Darby Allen came out. This was very interesting. Very interesting to point out. Darby Allen pointed out to Malachi Black that Brody King and Buddy Matthews don't need him. Anytime that Brody King's been wrecking shop, Malachi hasn't been around. Sting comes out to say that it's showtime. They leave, and then Miro stands alone to say he's going to wreck fools and pagans. They'll come in wearing their masks of fear, and they'll be leaving wearing masks of oxygen. If they do, hopefully they don't put them on the foreheads like they did of M like with MJF. We then got CM Punk's promo where he came out to the— and everybody's heard about this already. He came out looking disheveled, came out looking disappointed. He said he was hurt. He broke his foot. He was disappointed. He had to, you know, the, he had to be on the shelf for a while. Then he comes back against Moxley, and he fails, and he hurts his foot again. And no, it's not that bad. He could still continue to wrestle, but, man, he's all inside of his feelings bag. And that's when Ace Steel came out and said, look— you know, we talked backstage. He had that contract in his pocket. He see, he had it ready to go for Moxley. And Moxley's just now changing his mind. Now he's feeling bad about himself. He figures he can't do it anymore. Uh-uh. He fires up Moxley. He, he fires up uh, CM Punk, snatched him up, dropped an F-bomb. and which, By the way, I think it was the only curse on the show, which gave it even more impact because it sounded like it slipped out. It sounded like a mistake. If it wasn't a mistake, and again, if it was a mistake, 
well, okay, it was natural. If it wasn't a mistake, it came across perfectly. And long story short, CM Punk signed the contract uh, by a steal doing the Sam Kinison, sign it, sign it to CM Punk as if, you know, Punk was Rodney Dangerfield and back to school. I got a little bit of a pop out of that, but CM Punk went into the crowd, said that Moxley wasn't going to be the one that kills him. He signs the contract. That's that. We move on to a sit down between Christian Cage and Jungle Boy. It was very, very close. But it was the best of Jungle Boy because of the situation that it was, because it had a chance to be edited, and because the only, he didn't have a chance to wander. He didn't have a chance to meander. Bottom line is, when Christian Cage, he doesn't know if he ever actually cared for him or not, but when it comes to Sunday night, he ain't getting Jungle Boy. He's getting Jack Perry, which I'm sure made Jim Ross very happy sitting there here in that. FTR and Wardlow killed Silas Young, Ren Jones, and Vic Capri. Silas Young wasn't even in the match whatsoever. When we got back from break, John Moxley accepted the challenge of CM Punk. We then went into a locker room interview with the Dark Order in which Andrade offered Evil Uno and 10 jobs. When they turned him down, they attacked both of them. Evil Uno was going to fill in for 10 in the trio's tag team championship match coming up or in the tag team title tournament. Because he couldn't do that, Alex Reynolds and John Silver were wondering what they were going to do when Hangman Page stopped by and said, you know, if you need a friend, I'm right here for you. So he'll be the one teaming up on Friday night when that crew goes and battles the best friends. Get into the final two matches on the show when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi here with your Wrestling Observer Live. Put a bow on this AEW Dynamite show. Wheeler Yuta won a four-way match against Dante Martin, Ray Phoenix, and Arush to earn a spot in the casino ladder match on Sunday night. Look at those four names in the match, and it would be everything that you thought it was. Moves flying all over the place, and then Wheeler Yuta ends up getting the victory by reversing an arm drag of Dante Martin into the leg trap seatbelt submission to get the victory. And that was that, the main event of the show. Trios title tournament semifinals. Will Ospreay and Aussie open against the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. And of course, as you already know, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega got the victory anytime that Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay were, were in the ring with each other. It was amazing. Omega ended up hitting the one winged angel on Kyle Fletcher to get the victory, but that was wild. And it Again, Aussie Open was awesome. There's nothing against the Young Bucks, but every time that Osprey and uh, and Kenny Omega touched, the crowd was electric. We will be seeing that match in AEW. We will see that match in New Japan. I can't believe that it won't happen at some point whenever Kenny Omega and all that stuff, he's able to go over there. We're sure to see it. And I know down the line, we're going to see that match here in the States on an AEW show as the main event or... Well, again, it might as well be the main event because I'm not sure what's going to be able to follow it. So, you know, Tom, it was abundantly clear this week that I just don't get enough respect. Excuse me. I feel I deserve a little bit of credit for your your recent success. You want to take credit for my victory in the G1 climax? You can fuck off. Why don't you put your money where your little mouth is? And get in the ring with me. No. If you, if you really want to take credit for this shit, there's a tweet from August 3rd. Who wants to make it happen? I'll team with Debbie Malenko. Why don't you call up Billy Starks and why don't you step in the ring against me and her, huh? I'll text yeah, her right. right now. I'll be in Chicago all out weekend. How about that? I'll call up Mikey. The Black Label? Yeah. Debbie, are you... Available all out weekend. Look at those arms. Brian's not even in ring shape for this. Show me yours, Tom. Huh? Look at this. Go back and forth. Huh? Go back. Jared, put yours up. Go back. 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 Oh, yeah. Who's not in ring shape now, motherfucker? She can't do it. She can't do it. She can't do it. This is like when we grappled, Brian, and you clearly tapped. Oh, fuck off. I what a dick! Oh, so now now you're getting fired up. Well, Fuck, dude. You know, we can settle this. God, you know, we can settle this. You meet me in Chicago. Buddy. I'm I'm in. You've agreed. Yeah, I've agreed because you don't have Basically. a fucking partner. I will beat dude. your ass, silly. <laughs> yeah, I'm texting him right now, Mikey. By the way, okay. Yes, all caps. 
I'm not the only killer that you're going to be in there with, Brian. Killer Kelly. See you in Chicago. Although I, I was just alerted that the show is at 11 o'clock p.m., so I, I may have to pull out. That's past my bedtime. So if you're going all out weekend, Black Label Pro, Friday, September 2nd. I can't wait to beat your ass. Not going to happen. It's been years in the making.